guys. So another video today. Um, this one a bit different from my usual because this isn't a sniper. Um, that being said, I will be building it into an SPR rifle. So what we've got here is the Wolverine MTW and I've got the SPR version, so the 10 inch rail version. Um, obviously this is the EU model so it comes fitted with a restrictor in there which caps it about 1.8 um, and when I got mine it was set to semi only. So I've had this a while, um, I've held off and doing the video because I wanted to do some testing, um, although I have done a few live videos on Instagram uh, and there's some stuff on the Sniper Mechanics page, but this is it. So I'll show you the rifle as it looks now because I've changed a, a handful of things. So cheap post suppressor on the front which is just foam filled with paint roller foam. Um, obviously the MTWs come with this very nice rail uh, which is M-Lock so obviously getting the rails here in the UK is a bit of a pain and um, the clone ones uh, are not great. Um, got a Fortis style grip on the front, got a I think it's a spike tactical uh, one and a half to four short dot sight with a one piece mount uh, and mag or genuine mag or MOE stock. Obviously mine's on HPA at the moment, although I have a Wraith stock sat here. So out of the box, minus these additions, this is what you can expect. Quality is absolutely outstanding on this. Um, this is a, I think this was either a, a demo or a pre-production model that I got sent, but it is flawless. The, there's no marks on it, there's no, the coating is applied evenly trademarks look good all the engravings obviously the ridges cut out in the receiver and just the the different receiver shape honest to god one of the best guns i've picked up in terms of external quality um and yeah i've been really happy with it um only i said the only things i've really changed is just put a scope and a suppressor and things on it just because that's how i want to run it but when you get this although again mine's a demo version so you're probably going to get Maybe something a bit different, but mine came boxed um, with some spare O-rings, obviously for the engine. So this one is the uh, Inferno. Uh, yeah, the Inferno. You can tell because of the uh, the shape of the engine there. Got the Wolverine patch. Got the MW Quick Start Guide. Um, what I like about this is. There's no external FCU. Everything you need to adjust can be done by the trigger. So as I said, when I purchased, when this, when I got this one, it came uh, set to semi only. So I quickly just had a look through this, um, went on the website, had a look at the instructions on there, and Wolverine have got some really good instructional videos on the platform, how to set it up, how to get the best out of it. Um, how to install aftermarket parts like the Wraith or the Aero stock and things like that, as well as just general disassembly videos. So you've pretty much got access to everything you need to get the best out of this, um, which is pretty good. A lot of times people, people, companies release a product and there's not much in terms of aftermarket support in terms of how to get things apart, how you go about maintenance, doing the settings, things like that. You're kind of left to your own demise. So it was nice that they included that. Um, Obviously you get one mag, which is a mid cap. And this, if you use the actual Wolverine MTW magazines, they have a follower here. So basically when the gun runs dry, this little piece at the rear here will pop up and activate a micro switch, which I don't think you'll see in video. So down here, there's a micro switch. So when that's pressed, the gun cuts off. You've got to slap a new mag in and hit the bolt release, same as you would on something like the KWA, ERG and the TM recalls etc. And systemers. So that's quite a nice touch from a HPA engine. Uh, and for this particular one, got a little card from the guys, um, basically just saying, uh, just a little, little note there, just saying that one of the first to receive it, um, with a special email address, so if you need any support or anything, give the guys a, a message. Which is again a really nice touch. I mean, this isn't a uh, a particularly cheap purchase, absolutely reasonable purchase in terms of what you're paying versus what you're getting. 
as I said, the externals on this are incredibly good. Um, I haven't skirmished it properly. I've done a lot of testing with it. Obviously, I've got access to open fields here that I'm allowed to use. So I've done a lot of testing on it, um, and it's been dropped, and I've generally just sort of manhandled it a bit. And yeah, the quality and the resilience of it is extremely good. Again, it is just, it doesn't feel particularly weighty. Um, the only little niggling things that I'll point out is the stock tube spec is a bit strange. I've tried a few different stocks now and they've all got quite a bit of wobble. Um, whether it was the stock it came with, the Magpul. I've got a couple of real steel crane stocks um, and a few other ones. and They've all got quite a bit of wiggle. Um, easy enough to sort out with tape or Velcro. Um, the upper receiver and lower receiver, there is a gap between them. And there is a slight sort of mill of movement either way. Um, again, very easy to resolve. Um, I'm personally going to be printing uh, just a little 3D bracket that will sit at the back of the receiver. Um, and it will be relying on this pin here just to secure that. No dust cover. Not a huge issue because everything's pretty much self-contained. But obviously if you're playing in rain, obviously you are going to get water inside here and you have got that micro switch at the bottom. So I'm hoping the guys at Wolverine will uh, come out with something to print in there. I mean, I've I've had a crack at printing a few things and yeah, they're all right. Um, I'll probably will print something just to cover that up. The inner barrel has got a bit of wiggle inside the outer barrel. Um, again, not a huge issue. Just two seconds, wrap a bit of tape round during a barrel just to secure it. You probably... You can hear it there. So that's the basically the inner barrel hitting the inside wall of the outer barrel. Again, very, very minor things. Um, and you know, being airsoft, you kind of expect some few little things like that. But otherwise, I've got no complaints about it. It just works. The takedown is easy, getting it set up is really easy. Um, aftermarket parts, uh, from what I've read, or from what I've spoken to Richard, I think this takes normal AEG spec rails. So you can swap the m -lock rail out if you want. Um, I haven't yet, um, but I was tempted to um, swap mine out for an old Novesk rail that I've got, which is the correct length, um, albeit this is sort of like a, a grey colour, or the upper part of the receiver is like a, a blued metal grey colour, whereas this is uh, solid black. So a little mismatch of colour, but I will be painting this anyway, as I do with most of my stuff. Magazines are good quality in terms of the externals. Um, one thing I've noticed, and I think a few other people have, is it doesn't feed all the BBs. Um, so the last few will get cut off. Um, and it doesn't always feed. It could just be because it is a new mag. So maybe it's a case of I need to strip it, give it a clean, which again, for a mid cap, isn't too unusual. Um, I'd say it feeds sort of 99% of the time, but it will stop feeding at that moment when you need it to. But again, this is a first release model, so I expect these are obviously going to get improved as time goes on. But for the price of what you get, and it's, it's fine, it's reasonable. The fact that you have to take a mag apart and do a few little things here is, is minor. Not a big issue compared to the performance that you get out of this thing. So I'll show you how to break it down, really. Just sort of get how to get to the main insides. So I'm just going to remove the scope first. Um, and I will do some uh, some shooting of this. I'm, I've got the chrono set up here. I've got some twos. I've got some fours, just to show you sort of what you're going to get out of this in the what performance you're going to get out of this box wise. Um, and I've already done some range testing uh, with this, so I can tell you what it's coming out. At. So take down of this is stupidly simple. As with the normal M4, front and rear pins, so that they just need to get pushed out. Make sure the gun's obviously safe. Uh, and cleared of any rounds. And the pins don't even need any tools, they just slide out very nicely. And then you want to just, without resting it back down, you simply just put it up. And the feed tube obviously runs on mine because I've gone HPA at the moment. The, obviously, the airline goes through the grip, so just take that out. Put that down. And here, You've got the upper receiver. So what Wolverine have done here 
is rather than having any cables running from the engine to the uh, trigger box or trigger control unit, they basically, in pretty genius, ingeniously, um, put a contact plate here. So when this isn't assembled, you cannot do anything with it. There's no power being supplied to this. So if you're disassembling it for travel or putting it in a case, your battery's not going to get eaten up. There's nothing going on. So the engine's in here. You've got this clip here, which helps keep everything centered and aligned. So this only goes together one way. Like I've tried to put it together incorrectly. Uh, and it's, re it's really difficult to actually do. Um, the hop up is a strange two piece design. Um, they've done that again for the alignment issues and because of the way they've cut that receiver. Um, so I'll show you the bottom receiver and then I'll show you how to get everything out of here. So with the top receiver removed, you've obviously got the lower receiver here with your trigger unit there, battery cable, which in my one, um, it's still just run into the buffer tube. Um, what I like about this, and if anyone's seen any of my posts recently about the Polar Star stuff, um, the cables on this are much thicker and of better quality than the Polar Star miles better um, I've had this apart many times now and nothing's kinked nothing's frayed whereas the mp7 kit I got is just annihilated every cable snapped um, really bad so the way they've done this is really good so electronics is very simple um, Rich has done a video on the, how to get right into the nitty-gritty of this which I'm not going to do because I've got it set up at the moment and it's shooting quite well and considering it's stuck but obviously you can see the micro switch down here for the uh, bolt detection, empty mag detection, sorry. You've got obviously, real. I believe it's a real steel selector there. And these two little springs here are what actually make the contact with the contact plate here on the bottom of the upper receiver. So again, unless this is assembled, you're getting nothing out of it, which is pretty good. Um, something really really simple um, and it isn't a major thing but just something that I genuinely really like and it's one of my pet peeves about AEGs is the selector so this locks in place there's no wiggle room at all once that's in that's in and it's got a proper audible click it isn't easy to move it you know when you've moved that selector and as simple as that is, I like that. So it's very easy to switch between the two and know that you've gone from one to the other. There's no resting in the middle like other AGs or that very spongy feeling. In fact, I'll give you an example. So this is a D-Boys PDW and the selector on this is, it's just, it wobbles, it's spongy. There's no real, there's a tiny little click to let you know it's in there, but it's just sluggish and just doesn't feel great. Um, this is an ambi one, and yeah, like all of that movement, um, even though it's still only in semi, you've got all of that travel, and I just don't like it. Whereas with the Wolverine, it's simple little things like that that I just think make all the difference, and it's really what sets it apart in terms of build quality from a lot of other platforms. And it just feels, everything about it just feels well thought out. It's well machined. The finish is good. The way they've set things up in terms of how you can assemble it and disassemble it. All of these things just seem really well thought out. And it shows. It is a very easy gun to work on. It's very easy to swap things out. It works. Like I've picked up, I'll just put the HPA tank on it, take it out, do some shots, put it through the chrono. And I'll do that every few days just to, it's a joy to shoot. I'm, as someone who's not a particularly HPA AG focused player, obviously predominantly snipers, I do find myself enjoying using this. It is just reliable and for me it's quiet, which is very good. And with what's going on with snipers here in the UK and stuff, it's nice to be able to just put a rifle down sometimes and, and go out with something like this and maintain that stealth and still have that great range and that great accuracy. And for me, this this platform, as it is, 
brings a lot of what I want from a rifle. Um, and I know for a fact I can improve upon that with barrels, buckings, nubs, uh, and other little mods and things. So the potential here is huge. Out of the box, this is one of the best performing guns um, I've ever shot. Like it's 60, 70 meter, pretty accurate. Um, and it will hop fours. It will get them out there. It's very slow. Um, and the flight path is your traditional sort of arc path rather than being flat. But that's because of it's just it's using a standard bu bucking design. It's, use, it's not using a flat hop or something like a TNT or a maple it's, or a long contact patch. It is just a standard mound style bucking, which is tried and tested and it works. But there's definitely scope for improvement there, whether you want to just stick in uh, an aftermarket barrel and like a maple leaf bucking or a Prometheus Purp or anything like that. If it shoots as well as it does with the parts already in it, it can only get better with some of the other aftermarket parts. So what I'll do now is show you how to get into the engine if you ever need to maintain it, um, as well as how you can swap this hop unit out. So first things first, you've got to get this little plate up, which just pops up. So I'm gonna find my little screwdrivers. And then basically that just pops up. And then you just want to move that out of the way. And then you can basically, with that out of the way, you can basically just push this line out. Or to make it a bit easier, um, you can actually unplug the uh, contact plate from the back and then take the whole thing out. Um, albeit that is a bit of a bit of a pain to do. And there's this front clip here which you want to remove, which just pops up and out. And that basically just keeps the engine centered and aligned. And for the line, you can just push that through. So, what I've done is I've just unplugged the the plate from the rear just because it does make getting everything out easier. So with that out, what you can do, and Rich has confirmed that this this is strong, like this isn't going to kink or anything. So you can basically just fold it down and begin to push it through like that. That comes out and then pull the charging handle which on mine's very stiff. And there you have the actual engine itself. So the only thing plugging into this is the airline and then the contact plate. So that's how you get the engine out. And then from here, you can get into here, change any O-rings and stuff that you need, uh, anything else like that. Um, and Wolverine's got some really good videos I said mine's an Inferno, um, which again from the testing I've done is really good, really consistent, um, sort of one or two FPS. Um, all saying that, a lot of the consistency will come from um, the regulator that you're using. So with that out, and obviously we took this out, you then need to take off the BB feed tube, which I can't remember how that actually comes out. I think it just pulls down, though I could be wrong. Ah, sorry, don't need to remove that. The barrel assembly does just slide out. I think I'd know that by now, the amount of times I've had this apart. So it uses a pretty standard rotary style hop. It's got, again, a pretty standard stock brass barrel. Um, it's got a nice deep crown on it, which is good for a stock barrel. Um, and looking down the barrel, like, it's, it's a stock brass barrel, but it does work pretty well. And I'm just going to apply some hops so you can see what I mean about the bucking. Well, I hope you can see what I mean. So just a traditional mound style bucking with a standard nub in there. But you could swap that out for, as I said, you could go for maple leaf, TNT, 
uh, Prometheus, True Hop, anything like that should drop in a bit. The only thing you'll have to worry about and check is the feed lips, just because obviously with the HBA engines and the rate of fire you can get out of them. Anything that's got very soft or very long feed lips and can cause jams. But I've used Maple Leaf and HPA stuff um, in my Redline SR25 build. Uh, that's got a N7 mil sim in it with a 50 degree TNT bucket. And I've had no issues with that. So I'll probably go TNT with this as well. Um, or I'll, I'll try TNT first, see how I get with that. And I might go back to Maple Leaf, we'll see. Um, so yeah, the hop's fine. Like I found it doesn't unwind itself. The hop applied is pretty consistent. Um, and the quality of the hop units is good. There's obviously a good seal there with the standard bucking to get that very low FPS variance. Um, to change to a completely different aftermarket hop unit, um, you've got to take the rail off and the outer barrel, which is a case of loosening the two screws. Rail comes forward. You've got your barrel lock nut untighten that and then everything comes out from the front. Um, I'll do a video on that when I actually come to upgrade in this one. But in terms of getting into everything, that's pretty much it. It's very, very quick to do. Um, the only really fiddly bit that I found is getting uh, this plugged back in once you've got everything assembled, which I'm gonna do now. So charging handle back in. Hop you get back in first would help. Right, that's him. Put the engine in. And then what you want to do is before you clip everything back in, um, I personally think it's easier to, uh, to put the line back through and put the contact plate back through and then secure it in place just because that way you can move the engine back so that you can better access the rear section to plug in the contact cable. When putting this in, you'll see that the cables run naturally over to one side. Um, so depending on how you're looking at it, it's the left-hand side. So be mindful of that when you're installing it, that this needs to run down the left-hand side of the engine and the left-hand side of the airline. That's in, now I want to move the engine back far enough. So by not putting that clip in straight away, you can just push the engine back enough so that you can easily plug this back in. Like so. Slide it all forward. While holding it under tension from the rear, so I've just got my finger pushing that in, you want to take this little clip, which holds the engine in place, and just pop that back in. Like so. And then I'm gonna thread the airline, no, not the airline, sorry, put the contact plate back down, which is a case of just making sure it's lined up and nothing is pinched. Obviously, even though the cables on this are a lot higher quality than some other HBA engines, you can still nip them and pinch them. So when you're installing it, just be gentle, make sure that all your cables are, are out of the way and nothing's getting pinched. And once you're certain it's in where it needs to be, just uh, push it down. Like so. And then close your bolt. Mine's My charging handle is really stiff, um, which is fine by me because it means there's no wobble in it. But that is everything now fully assembled. Um, it's the same whether you've got this or you've got the Reaper engine. And then it's a case of installing a battery, which obviously I've got mine already installed. And if you're running the line out the bottom like I am currently, then you can just stick the battery in the tube. There's more than enough room for it. Then with your battery lead, you wanna tuck it down so that it sits because obviously where the, tr the trigger unit is, there's a gap all the way down the left hand side. So you want it down there just so that it sits under this rear pin when the receiver's assembled. And then you need to thread the line through. 
which is generally pretty easy to do. Like so, and then just drop it together. Rear pin in, front pin in, and we're there, we're good to go. So take down servicing, putting it back together is really easy. One of the big benefits of this is because you can only put it together one way, if, you're, if you've got it dialed in and it's shooting really well, when you're taking it apart to service it, clean it, do whatever, and you're putting it back together, everything goes back in how you left it because of the way it aligns. So you generally don't have to retweak any of your hop settings, which is quite nice because on a normal AG, the second you take it apart, you've got to just do everything again. And with normal HPAs, the second you take it apart, you've got to start doing all the alignment again. With this, it comes apart one way, it goes together one way, um, which is a big bonus. I want something that I can just pick up, put whatever I need in, in my case, a battery and an airline. Though I have got the um, uh, the Wraith CO2 stock because the style I play, having that line for me is a bit of a, a disadvantage. Um, if I'm running around and gunning, sort of playing an assault roll, not a problem. But obviously when I do the sniper roll, I'm down in the dirt. I don't want to get caught on things. So for that reason, I will be running the CO2 stock. And now the bit that you're going to be interested in is what it chrono is at. Um, I've set mine to about three... 330 FPS, I think, um, to allow for dual creep. So most sites are 350 S FPS, which is sort of like 1 1.3 joules. Um, so I've got mine set, so it's about one joule on twos, um, and it creeps up to the limit, rather than setting it for 350 and then having it chrono over the limit. Because I'll be running three sixes or fours in this, um, obviously I didn't want to dual creep over any limit, so I've set mine lower on twos, so that I creep to the limit or just under the limit on the ammo that I'll be using. So, got my trusty uh, X Cortec Chrono set up. Uh, that is on twos. Got a mag full up of twos. So I'm just using good old devils for testing. Batteries in, chronos here. So, reg wise, I'm using the uh, ballistic regs. I've got one of these for the MTW and my Tanaka that I run off CO2 uh, uses the ballistic reg. Um, they're very cheap. Uh, you can get them with or without the line. Um, skirm shop sell them. I'm using a very small tank that I borrowed off someone. Um, although I have got the normal 13 CL tank. Um, I've just got this one here for testing. Being small, I can pump it up easily because I've got a three stage pump. So I'm manually uh, pumping these bad boys up. But with the ballistic reg, um, I find I get very, very good consistency for the price. So I'm going to go ahead and connect this. Oh, one th I can't remember if I mentioned it, but I don't know if it says on here. Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, yeah, so one thing I forgot to mention earlier is on this little info card you get, it states, stock MTWs are shipped with a flow reducer installed in the airline to reduce maximum energy to safe levels and to comply with various countries' legal standards. Changing the airline or equipping your MTW with a Wraith Aero or Wraith CO2 will change your maximum energy output of the system. So basically, because this is being shipped outside of the States, um, specifically to places like Ireland, UK and Germany and Portugal, where the limits are pretty, pretty much set in stone, and, and to some degree that the Netherlands now, I believe, um, they've got a restrictor in the line. So I think the maximum you can get out of this is sort of like 1.6 joules or 1.7 joules. Um, however, should you change that to an aftermarket line, um, or again, in my case, run the CO2 wraith stock, um, you have got a lot more potential to go up, up and above those limits if your country allows. Um, but I just wanted to get that out there because I've I was a bit confused when I was tuning it. I couldn't get over a certain limit. And then I remember they did it actually include a little note to say, because of your market, these come with a, a restrictor. So, got the line in. Uh, chrono is still on. Mag in. Um, the mags are solid in this, by the way. There's no wobble. They click in. Um, 
which is very nice. So the chrono is just set literally just down here. So I'm going to do three shots or five shots, sorry, on semi. And obviously this is like 40 centimeters from the camera and I have got a suppressor on. Right, so five shots, which is 0.99 joules on a two. So 326.5 FPS. And in terms of consistency, I don't know if you'll see that on camera, but it was 325.7, 327.6, 327.8, 328.8, 326.5, standard deviation 0.11, average 327, and maximum deviation was 3.1. So incredibly consistent. Um, for something that is essentially still new. I've put less than a thousand rounds through this. Actually, that's probably a lie. I have shot it quite a lot. I've probably put about 1500 rounds through it. Um, but very consistent. So that was on twos. Uh, I have got some fours here. Mine is currently set to three round burst. Um, I don't like using full auto on HBA. I think it's a bit overkill. Um, I think three round burst for the way I play and where I play is more than adequate. Um, especially since I'm running something like three sixes or fours, no one needs to be full autoed with that. Um, so three round burst. Which sounds, and this is just a, a cheapo crap suppressor. Um, nothing fancy about it. With an actual decent suppressor on it, these are phenomenally quiet, as with most HPA things. So that was 322.9 on a three round burst. Um, burst settings are always hard for chronos to capture, but still under that one joule limit. So, well, 1.3 joule limit on twos. So I'm just gonna flick that back to safe, empty the mag, and you'll see BBs still fall out. Um, although I imagine there's probably a way to modify the, um, the feed tube, maybe do what Silverback have done and cut a few slits in it with an O-ring um, just to keep the, the BBs under tension. Um, maybe install a max model hop unit, I'm not sure if they'd fit. But I'm just going to empty uh, empty this mag and put some fours in it. So I've got some BLS fours here for testing, wherever my speed load is run off to. First one, so that's going to be a two. All right, so this has got fours in, so I'm just going to rechange the chrono. Set that to fours. All right, so that's on fours. Obviously, that's going to read the point two at the moment. So magnum, nice and solid. Chrono one. Chrono wants safety off, so single. So, at the moment, that's actually coming out pretty much where I wanted. So the limit for most places on a AEG uh, or anything fully automatic is 1.3 joules. So mine is set so that it's 1.17 joules on a four. So that gives me a bit of playroom. Some sites are a bit higher, some are a bit lower. And obviously with the variance in different chronos, I mean, I've got three here. I've got this X Cortec, I've got the old gray one, um, and I've got another one somewhere. Um, and they all give sort of up to 10, 15 FPS variance. So it's always better to be a little bit under because if you reach the limit exactly and a site's chrono is a bit hotter than yours, bit higher than yours you can't use it so they dual creep um, by about what's that it was one jewel so about 16 17 percent dual creep on this particular build um, between a two and a four 
but for me personally, under the legal limits. Um, did I capture the consistency on the fours? Yep, so on fours, it was 251.8, 2 253.9, 251.8, 2 251.7, 251.7. 2 so all within 2.1 FPS of each other, which is absolutely spot on. And as I said, out the box, um, this will hop fours to sort of 65, 70 metres with a good degree of accuracy, albeit the flight path is sort of arced. It isn't flat like you'd get with like TNT, true hop, flat hop, etc. Um, so, yeah, it's out of the box. It's really good. Um, and obviously, the, your readings and stuff, you're going to get a vary whether you go for the short, the medium, or the, the longer one. Um, in terms of shots, uh, I don't actually know off the top of my head um, how many shots I'm getting out of a bottle. <laughs> I think it's about 500 odd out of a 13 CL, um, maybe a bit more. Um, yeah, it's something I'll, I'll have to try and check that ahead of the next video. But as I keep saying, like the, the quality of this is just outstanding. The performance is great. Um, as I just, as I said, I, I like the fact that I can just pick this up, take it out of the case, put a mag in, put a HB line on, and it's, it's good to go. Um, do you want to disconnect that? It works, and it's light. It's a lot lighter than a, an AEG, just because there's obviously no gearbox, there's no motor in there. Um, it's very comfortable to shoulder. The mags drop out nice and easily, no faffing about. Um, I believe that normal M4 mags work, you just lose the cutoff function. Um, so this is just a, a D-Boys magazine for the PDW and yeah that fits in locks in actually no wobble on that uh, and I tested this it fits um, I imagine most brand M4 mags will fit obviously the MTW mags give you the benefit of uh, the empty mag detection but if you're not bothered about that and you've already got a, a load of standard M4 mags majority of them are gonna fit in there and as I said it is just a, a nice gun everything about it the rail is there's no sharp edges on either side of this everything's cut well everything's got chamfers and radiuses so there's nothing that's gonna catch on you um, with some of the other cheaper M4 platforms um, the quality just isn't as good and things are sharp there are burrs and things like that whereas this is just it's nice I just I can't pay it enough compliments as I said, the only niggly little bits is that a few bits are a bit loose and a bit wobbly, but otherwise, it is a cracking rifle. Um, and if you are looking at HPA, while it's a bit more of an investment um, over if you just bought an AG and a HPA engine, you're not having to spend loads of time tuning anything. It, it comes out of the box, and even on the instructions, it says mount your regulator, set it to 100 psi, connect your line. Uh, and from factory at 100 psi, depending on which model of gun you've got, short, medium, or long, it should come out of the box at 1.1 to 1.3 joules. And I changed nothing with this when I got it. I literally got all giddy, got it out of the box, messaged the guys at Wolverine, said thank you very much, bought myself a, a three stage pump, grabbed a couple of tanks, filled it up, airline in, factory in, put some threes in it. Straight down the line, just dot, 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 dot. And I thought, well, that's great. Let's see what it can do. Put some fours in it, straight down the line. Really good. Being HPA, the consistency's there. So while it is a, a larger outlay, if you were to buy a, a decent quality AEG in terms of the externals, something of a comparable level to this, which, to be fair, it will be quite difficult to do. And then you bought the Inferno separately, Actually, you'd probably spend about the same amount, but you'd have the hassle of having to align everything and having to set everything up and modify gearboxes to see if the engine fits and your tap it plate and your fire selector and your hop unit. Not, there's just a lot of things you'd waste time on. And if you put a, a value on how much your time's worth in an hourly figure, by the time you've spent 10 hours getting the damn thing set up, you, you've you've had another 100 quid worth of wasted time that you could have just put towards getting a, a pre-built gun that is 
it isn't a conversion, it's a, it's a specific gun HBA designed around a HBA engine. Rather than an engine that drops in an AG, it's a, a gun built around a HBA engine. So it's great. What else to mention? Um, I've had nothing come loose, I didn't have to tighten anything when I got it. Um, mine come with an orange flash hider, so obviously I'll just put the cheapo suppressor on it. But I've actually knocked up a couple of these. So because I've got the bloody printers now, I'm forever printing random things. So this, uh, before I got the proper suppressor, was my little mini suppressor, just to take the crack out of the, the muzzle report without adding any real length to it. Um, so that just threaded onto my outer barrel with a 14 mil counterclockwise thread, which is what this has. Um, so yeah, nice, easy, took about an hour to print. Um, and yeah, worked surprisingly well without having to, obviously it's nowhere near as quiet as a proper bigger foam field suppressor, just because obviously the volume that this can take is a lot smaller than the a normal suppressor, but it worked and it, it looked all right. Um, I've got various designs of that, but with this cheapy, crappy suppressor, this is quiet. Let alone if you put a, a DTSS suppressor on it or did like the paint roller mods that I've done in some of my other videos or Scotch Bright um, or did the fart flap or anything like that. Um, you can get these phenomenally quiet. And for something that can send fours downrange on semi-auto as fast as you can pull the, pull the trigger or three round burst, um, it's, it's a lethal weapon. And I'm going to get this painted. Now I'm happy with the externals. Um, I'm going to get it painted. The next video, uh, I'm going to go through installing the Wraith CO2 stock. Um, <laughs> anyone who read my blog on the red line N7 Mielsen build knows that I, I had a lot of problems with the air stock on my uh, red line. Once I got it installed, it was phenomenally good, really convenient to have, but it required a lot of chopping and changing, whereas watching the videos from the guys over at Wolverine, again, they've, they've thought out how this is going to go together, and it looks, touch wood, like it should be a simple installation to go from HBA line to inline CO2. So I'm excited about doing that, just so I don't have that line. Um, be interested to see what the consistency is like from the Wraith stock, versus the ballistic. Um, I'm going to run it stock for a while um, just so I can get a true opinion of it um, and then I think I am going to put a TNT bucking, TNT nub and TNT barrel in it um, just to see if I can get any any further gains on this at range and accuracy when using that heavy ammo at those lows of 1.2 joule limits. So that's it for now guys, I'm going to do some more content on this, um, I'm going to do a, a proper write up on my blog on this in the next week or so. I've been a bit busy with some other projects, but I wanted to get this done. Um, it's been one of those that sat there. I've, I've done a lot of sort of live impromptu content with it, but I really wanted to be able to sort of set some time aside, make sure the bench is clear, have everything out, everything set up so I can do a proper, decent, sort of honest review of this. Um, in transparency, I, I paid very little for this. Um, I think I just paid shipping uh, and import. Um, and a big shout out to Chris from uh, High Pressure Airsoft here in the UK. Um, spoke to Rich and we had a conversation and uh, basically I got offered one of these um, and they were sending some MTWs over to HPA anyway. So they basically said, oh, if you speak to the guys over at HPA, see about them sending you this demo straight to you rather than us sending it to you because of the fees and stuff. So they facilitated that. Um, they kept me up to date. They got it out to me sort of within a day of them receiving it themselves, which I really appreciate. Um, they had this up for pre-order, and I think they've still got this. Um, so if you're interested in getting one of these, check out High Pressure Airsoft in the UK. Uh, I think he's got stock. I don't know if he's got any mags, because um, I have been looking for some more for myself. Um, and in terms of if you are looking to upgrade it, um, TNT would be the the way I would, the route I would go down, or Maple Leaf. Um, or just, just flat hop the existing bucket and put a nub in because it seems to shoot pretty well as is and I wouldn't say it even needs upgrading but me being me, I'm, I'm going to have to upgrade it just because I like taking things apart and testing so final thoughts on it good investment insanely good quality on the externals few little loose things but again I, I haven't seen a production one of these so I don't know if that's specific to this model because as I said this is um, it's either a pre-production or a demo model um, 
I did have a little note saying which one it was. Is it shop stock? Um, but either way, so it could be these little nuances you might not have on a, a release version, a production version. But either way, I'm incredibly happy with it. Um, I'm going to paint it. I don't know what I'm going to paint it yet. Um, maybe sort of like a pen cotty type paint job. Um, I need to get some more magazines for it and then get the, the stock installed. But um, if you've got any questions about this or if you want any more specific info or pictures or anything like that, if you've got one of these and you're looking at upgrading it, um, or you, you're thinking of purchasing one and you just sort of want sort of a quick chat about how it works and things and address any issues or concerns you might have about purchasing one, then just let us know. Message me here or Facebook and Instagram. Um, I generally try to reply to all the messages I get. Um, just give me a bit of time to get back to you. Um, otherwise, speak to the guys at Wolverine. Um, they have nothing but time and patience. Um, I bought a bolt off of them a couple of years back. I had, had a few issues with it. Um, they could not do enough to help me. They sent spare parts um, to help me get it up and running. Um, and that's how this whole conversation came into play. Um, I had a couple of questions when I first got this, because this is my first venture into HPA, um, electro-pneumatic HPA. Um, I've run things like the Mancraft, which is purely pneumatic, and the N7. But this is the first HPA I've had since a, a Polar Star Jack, sort of two or three years ago. So I had a few little questions about some things that, what would they suggest parts-wise, and regulator wise and stuff like that um, and how to set it up because the the way you set this up is it's all done via the trigger and it's sort of plug the battery and hold the trigger and then you can go to this menu and click the trigger two or three times or plug the battery and hold the trigger on safe click it two or three times for three hour burst and things like that um, which was all quite new to me i'm very much used to basic bolt action rifles um, and again they had nothing but time and patience um, from my dealings with them before and other people that I know that deal with them, that they're always happy to help. Um, they do seem to pride themselves in what they do. They're not just flooding the market with products and, and leaving it be. They do seem to want feedback. They they do like they like having criticisms, but they like the fact they get feedback and they do seem to act on it. So yeah, I mean, if I didn't get sent this and I saw one, I would purchase one. I'm probably gonna purchase another upper for this anyway. Um, uh, a longer one so that I can use this at the 450 limit um, because it's so easy to just swap out um, obviously the upper just pop the pins out, out it comes new one on, I'm probably going to speak to the guys and purchase another longer outer barrel uh, with a wrist rail etc um, just because I have been that happy with it um, so yeah, so, so the guys at Wolverine really good job on this, big fan of it uh, and I'm not usually a HBA fan so well done on that and yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. It's it's an interesting product. It's a good product. Um, and yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed shooting it. It's, I mean, I've, I've used AEGs in the past and I've still got one or two knocking about, but I probably won't use one again now I've shot this. I don't think I'm going to be able to have something that shoots as well as this for the amount of time I'd have to invest in it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I'm happy with it. So I'm going to leave this video here, guys. As I said, feel free to message me if you've got any questions or want to know anything specific about my MTW and what I plan to do with it or just any info about it in general. Um, and if you haven't already, the usual like, subscribe, check out my Instagram, um, check out my Facebook and things. Um, and yeah, enjoy the MTW if you've got one because they are cracking guns.